So I'm doing a series of videos that I'm just going to call story time about different things that I have went through with my daughter after she was shaken and just little things that happened throughout that time through now, which she has, you know, she passed away three years ago. So this is a, the time period of like the last six years. So there's lots of stories to tell, lots of ways that God worked in our life and did things and just, you know, I want to share about those things. So this particular story is about a time I was having this pity party and just feeling so sorry for myself being in the situation of my daughter needed surgery and I was alone, a single mom, didn't have anybody there with me at that time. Nobody could come to sit with me while um, she was having this surgery and she was having this major bowel surgery. So just a little backstory, my daughter was shaken by my now ex-husband, her biological father, and she suffered a stroke. She suffered extensive brain damage. She had very severe disabilities, and she lived for about three years after being shaken before she passed away from those initial injuries. So throughout that time, she had different things happening to her, you know, medically due to the original, you know, initial injury. So this particular time, she had to have a bowel resection, which was this huge major, you know, surgery because she had an intest uh, intestinal infection. And so, because of that, she had to go through several different surgeries. Well, there was a time, you know, she was about a year old. So, this was like a year into dealing with all the things after being shaken. And she had to have surgery on a particular day that nobody could come sit with me. You know, my mom had to work, things like that. And I didn't have a ton of friends in that situation. Um, so I was having this pity party sitting there in the waiting room. And I was just like, I can't believe that I'm here alone, that I have no husband, that, you know, just going on and on in my thoughts down a negative thought spiral and, you know, part of me was blaming God. Like, God, how could you allow me to allow your daughter <laughs> to be sitting here alone in this traumatic situation? And, you know, really looking back, I could have somehow found someone. I could have, you know, asked more people. I could have done things to probably find someone. And maybe God just wanted me to be sitting there alone. Who knows? But... So I had my coffee there. I had my Jesus Calling book that I was sitting there with, completely ignoring, I guess, because it wasn't, you know, motivating me at all to be in a better mindset. Um, but I was arguing back and forth with God, just like, I'm so upset to be here alone. And nothing was really going on. I was just waiting for her in surgery, which is a, you know, nerve wracking time. And you don't want to be alone. But instead of putting my trust in God and saying, God, I know you're here with me. I know that you're going to take care of this. I know that whatever the outcome is, you're here. And I don't have to worry about being alone because you're with me. You know, instead of that kind of mindset, I was just spiraling down to this negative mindset and allowing myself to stay there and dwell and have a pity party. And I know those, those negative emotions and feelings are going to come, but it was me staying in them. That was the problem. And so... I kept arguing with God, like, it's not right of you to leave me here like this. Well, then I see this older man who had a volunteer shirt on, like, walking towards me. And there might have been a few other people in the waiting room at that time. And she had a long surgery. And so, he starts walking towards me. I'm like, no, 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 no. I am in such a bad mood. Do not talk to me. Like, I don't want to talk to you. And that's how I felt about it at the time. I was like, please don't talk to me. Well, of course, he sits down right next to me and just starts a conversation. And I'm just like, really? Come on. Don't you know? Like, I'm in a bad mood. Why would you even just, like, come up here and start talking to someone who's sitting here alone? And, you know, you probably, you should know that I don't want to have a conversation. That's, that's how I felt. And so, he just started talking. And this weird, overwhelming, like, comforting feeling 
came upon me. So now I see, okay, God sent this man over here because of my pity party to get me out of it. Um, and because I had been blaming him for not providing for me. And so he provided for me in that moment. And maybe he had that planned the entire time. I just didn't wait long enough for God to send him to me. So anyways, it was a very good conversation. Like I ended up really just loving talking to this person. And I never would have talked to him if number one, I had somebody with me. And number two, I didn't just say, okay, fine, I'll talk to this guy and open up myself to that. I could have just said, please don't talk to me, you know. Um, so having that conversation with him basically took my mind off of worry, took my mind off of any kind of fear I had. And it just allowed me to just, you know, I was scrunched up like this all mad and just to relax. And if, first of all, if he wasn't brave enough to come approach me, a younger woman who probably had this terrible look on her face, who looked mad and unapproachable, if that man didn't have the courage to come over and talk to me, it would have been a different outcome for me. And I'm so thankful. Like, I know without, without a doubt that God sent him over to talk to me. And so I'm so glad that he took God's prompting. And so there may be time in your life where God is prompting you to go talk to somebody or go pray with somebody or whatever it is. And I want to encourage you to go do it. Don't allow the fear of like, well, that person might reject me. Because even if he came over and I said, please don't talk to me. You know, he could he could have just been like, okay, and walked off. And he could have been afraid to take that risk of being rejected, but he wasn't afraid. He just went ahead and did it. And so I'm so thankful that he didn't allow any of his own fear or anything to stop him from approaching me and helping me feel better and making me feel like I'm not alone. And so um, anyways, that was a very great conversation, a very great outcome. And I learned a lot from this story, from this situation, because thinking about myself, like how many times have you walked by someone who got, you may have felt God prompting you even just a little bit to go talk to them, to say hi to them, to, you know, to go pray for them. That's bold. And you just ignored it or suppressed it and thought, no, that's just me thinking that that's not God. Or, you know, how many times have we ignored God prompting us to go do that with someone just because of our own fear of being rejected. You know, worst case scenario, the person's like, I don't pray or I don't need your prayers or don't talk to me or, ugh, you know, just look at you and just like go away. Like, okay, if that's the worst case scenario, at least you were obedient and followed through with what God was asking you to do. So those are some lessons I learned from that particular story. And to not doubt that God will provide because he provided that completely. And now I felt dumb for blaming God for not providing for me. Like he always does. And so the fact that I was sitting there blaming him for not providing and then he provided, it's like, oh, yeah, you do always provide, don't you? And so anyways, I hope that provides some kind of encouragement for you and that you appreciated this story. I'll see you on the next video. And until then, I hope that if God does prompt you to talk to someone like that, that you'll follow through.